Hi there, I'm Zaz. Welcome back to Unfurl to Release. And today we're really looking at elevating our heart. So in today's practice, we're going to go through our drills to prepare the body. And then we're going to come into our tutorial, which is wheel pose. And so a few variations, what I really wanted to look at are different ways, a couple of different transitions to, trans to get us into wheel pose. So let's start on the mat. Start by coming to child's pose, opening your knees again. So we're going to start off, in fact, start before you settle into child's pose, start off on hands and knees and then take an anterior pelvic tilt, arching the back. And then from here, start to lower down real awareness that we're coming into spinal mobility. So start to lower down, chest to the floor, good, sinking down. And let's straight away start by turning the palms towards one another, lifting the arms up and down, lifting the arms up and down, and arms up and down. Two more times. Lift the arms up and down, and up and squeeze, hold it here. You can pulse for five, four, three, two and one release all the way down good relax give your shoulders a little shake let's take the right arm all the way back in a big circle and then forwards take the left arm all the way back in a big circle and then forwards take the right arm all the way back slowly slowly and forwards left arm all the way back take your time Come all the way back and all the way forwards. And then right arm, we do this twice more on each side. And the left side. So we want to make sure that we have the mobility and strength in our shoulders, as we know, for our back bends we've been doing in the last few sessions. And coming all the way back and all the way forwards. Good. Allow yourself to wiggle down onto the mat. Bend your elbows, clasp your hands behind your head. Slide your elbows forwards a little bit more and sink your chest down into the floor. And for our next drill, come onto your hands and knees and extend the right leg out. And bring, bend your elbows, bringing your chest down, looking forward, lifting the leg up and then bend the knee, point the toe. And come back up. Extend the toe to the floor and then lift the right leg, bend the elbows, lift the leg up, bend the knee, toes to the head. Coming back up, rise up, so strength through your arms as well as arching the back. Coming up, right leg lifts, bend the knee, good, and come back. Two more on the right side, so coming down chest to the floor. Extend, bend the knee, extend back, toes to the floor, and then coming back, lift the leg, elbows bend, bend the knee, heel to your bottom, and then extend, toes to the floor, come back, change sides. So if you want to take a little wriggle here, move from side to side, moving the hips, and then changing sides, left leg is extended, Lift the left leg up, squeezing the left glute. Try to avoid opening the hip as you lower down. Good. Lifting the leg, bend the knee once again and extend, coming up. And then bend the knee, bend the elbow, sorry. Bend the knee and extend, come back up. Toes to the floor. Lift the leg, bend the elbows. Lifting up, bend the knee, extend. Come back up twice more. Elbows bend, chest to the floor, chin to the floor. Bend the knee and extend. Rise back up, toes to the floor. Last time. Again, elbows bend into the body, squeeze them into the ribcage. Bend the knee and come up. Good. Knees to the ground. Take a little wiggle. <laughs> Good. From here, walking the hands forwards, we come down into puppy pose. So slowly start to descend. 
allowing your chest to melt, keeping your hips on top of your knees. Now this can be quite hard to know if you've moved forward. One good way to do this is actually to pop a block in front of your knee. Keep a sensation of the block to your knee. If you were to move forwards, the block will fall. If you were to move backwards, you will fill a big gap, yeah? So we want to keep the block snug to your leg. Whoops, snug to your leg. And start to lower down, and lower down. Head. Keep the block close to your leg as you lower your chest. Head. And come all the way down. From here, bend the elbows. Bring your hands to the back of your head. Pause here for five breaths. Every time you breathe out, feeling yourself sinking a little deeper into the floor. Letting your elbows slide forwards. Lowering down. And then pressing, lifting up. Extend your arms. Come all the way back up. And come back. Remove your block. And come back to sit in neutral. So again, we're trying not to unravel the spine every time we arch it. We're trying to continually find more and more space. Good. Let's take a little bit of shoulder mobility. Take hold of a strap. And if you need to go and get one, just hit pause. Go and grab a strap. Bend your knees. Again, to reach forward. Keep the spine nice and long. Belly to thighs. And then come forwards, take the arms back and come forwards. Take the arms back and then forwards. Keep the chest connected to the thighs. Good. We're going to take that five times. Good. Looking down into the space between the knees. So my neck is long. Good. And two more. Good. And last one. Really finding that mobility through the shoulders. Wonderful. And release. Good. So we're going to come on and now take our King Arthur's drill that we've done before. It's a great drill. Bringing the knee back. Let toes to the floor. Again, it doesn't matter which side you start with. I'm starting with the right knee back. And from here, I'm lifting up nice and tall, leaning back. And really just feeling that engagement through the front quad, pressing my shoulder blades into the wall. And maybe even bringing that left foot back so it's directly underneath my knee. If I can, I'm going to tuck the tailbone under. Woo, that's strong on that hip flexor. Good. Good. Now, for right now, we're going to step, take the left foot forwards a bit and allow the right hip to sink. Good. Now you're going to feel an arch in your lower back. Clasp your hands over the knee, allowing yourself to sink at this, through the hips. At the same time, you're lifting up through the front body. Lift your chest. And now, if you can, squeeze the right toes off the wall and then back, even if it's a millimeter. Right toes off the wall and then back. Right toes off the wall and then back. Lift the arms up. Take your arms back to the wall and then forwards. Take the arms back to the wall and then forwards. Take the arms back to the wall, pause here. Turn your palms, fingertips to the wall. Start to walk your hands down. Good. Really opening through the chest. Press away from the wall, lift your gaze. Good. And we come back up. Good. Bow forwards, switch sides. You need to take your opposite knee to the wall, right snug close to the wall. Opposite foot, making that right angle underneath your knee. 
clasp your hands and lean back. Good, and again, making sure that that ankle is directly underneath the knee. And at first, some, for some of us, we might find that we're leaning forward a little bit. It's totally fine. In time, we want to start to gently walk back, little at a time, until we bring the back, the shoulder blades, onto the wall, tailbone down. Good. Again, lifting up through that left hip, that opposite hip. Good. Mm, really feeling a good old stretch here. Here, we're going to come forwards, wiggle that bent knee forward, that foot forward, and start to sink down. Clasp your hands over the thigh, and again, while we release through the hips, we're lifting up, so you should feel a lot of activity, lengthening through the left quadricep and through the left hip flexor. Ah, lift the chest. Good. Nice. And then lift the arms up, take them back, and then forwards. Take them back, and then forwards. Take them back, and then forwards. Last time, take the arms back. Good. Turn your fingertips round. Start to walk the hands back. See if you can avoid the elbows wiggling out to the side. Squeeze them in a little bit more. And there's going to be some external rotation, that's normal, but try not to go too hard, too much, and press away, looking back. And breathe. Good. And you release, come back, gently see if you can get the left, the toes off the wall and back, toes off the wall and back, and toes off the wall and back. You really should feel that through your quad, through the hamstring at the back of the leg. Good. Come on down. So we've really stretched through the front body a huge amount. We're going to come into opening through the thoracic spine. So we've worked the shoulders, oh, shoulder opening. We're going to work through the thoracic. Now coming back to taking your blocks. I'm going to take my blocks with my stack of books to make it a little extra higher. Good. And this time we're going to do a slightly different drill to start with. You're going to stay on your knees so your knees are bent. And then I'm going to come down so that my shoulder blades are flat on my blocks. So I might need to play a little bit with the distance. Good. So come to find yourself so that your shoulder blades are flat to the block. Good. Good. From here, take the arms up, reaching back. Good. Now push the hips up and down. Take the arms all the way up. Good. Gaze forwards and then lower back. Lift the hips and come down. Good. Lower back. Lift the hips up, pushing. Good, and come down, making sure that you're still stable wherever you are. Good, lifting up. Good, lower. Take 10 times. So we're going to do another six. Here, yeah, lift the chest. Whoop. And back down, maybe a little sliding around. Coming back, lift the hips up. Good. And come down. And again, lift the hips. Yeah, come down. Two more. Lift the hips, look back. Really push the hips to the sky. And last time, lifting all the way up. Push, head, and come all the way back down. Good, coming up. We're going to sit down. Oh, I thought I lost my book. And you're going to sit down and take your blocks once again. This time, we're going to come back to doing this activity where you're going to be dropping the hip and lengthening through the tailbone. So bringing the edges of your shoulder blades, just the very edge, good, to the block. Find your way there. 
Good, and then arching the back. And we're gonna take the arms back towards the floor. And then again, notice that you want to do an anterior pelvic tilt, your bottom sticking out. Instead, tuck the tailbone under. Good, lift up and come down, but keep the tailbone tucked. Extend the arms overhead, lifting up, tuck tailbone, squeeze glutes, lower down, but lengthen the tailbone. Let your bottom hit the ground without arching your lower back. Lifting up, lower down, lifting up, lower down, three more. Lifting up, squeeze glutes, lower down, and lift up. Lower, we'll do one for luck. Lift all the way up, squeeze glutes, and lower down. Good. Coming to bring yourself up. Now we're going to find ourselves a little bit more. Support through the back. And in this time taking this, myself all the way back so that actually my shoulder blades are on the edge of the top of the block this time. Good. So keeping the hips to the ground, I'm going to start to send my tailbone away again. So lengthening through the tailbone. I'm going to take the arms back and up to my knees and then back. Good, and up through my knees. Back, all the way back, hands to the ground. Coming up, two more. Lean back, reach back, what can you release? Coming all the way back, and last time, opening, stay here. Maybe cactus your arms, and then extend and cactus the arms, good, and then extend. Last time, cactus the arms, and extend. Come all the way up, good. Safely bring yourself off your stack of blocks, your props, whatever you're using, and we're going to move them out of the way. One last little drill for the back, which is super effective. We're going to come into using the wall to open shoulders and chest. So coming to find yourself to the wall, hands on the wall, lean forward, allowing your chest to come forwards. And come back. And come forwards again. Press with your hands to come back. Remembering not to round your back as you come back up. And maybe walk the hands up slightly. Sink forwards and come back. Last time we're sinking forwards and come back. Now we're gonna get ourselves into the wall up close and personal, as close as is available to you. So coming to lie down, and it's not the most elegant of entries, you're going to come onto your belly, coming up nice and close to the wall, and then we're gonna walk your hands up to the wall. So big back bend, bringing your chest to the wall, so wriggle yourself close, your chin to the wall, and then one arm comes up, and then the other. And stay here for 10 breaths. Just noticing, doesn't matter if the legs are apart, that's okay. The glutes are turned on to protect the lower back. How does it feel if you relax the glutes? A little bit more compression through the lower back. Good, maybe you adjust slightly. Good, another couple of breaths here. Relax the face. And when we're ready to move out, we move really slow. One hand down at a time, shifting back. Good, coming onto your knees. Pause here. We talked about at the beginning, the very beginning of this course, the bravery and vulnerability that's involved in opening up the heart. When we allow ourselves to feel fully, we really, really are being super brave. We allow ourselves to love ourselves 
that's also being brave because that's not what society tells us to do. It's often about pouring our energy into others. And yes, we can do that. But if we don't love ourselves and fill ourselves up, then we're also always going to be needing to be filled by somebody else. So we can't fully give to them until we've fully given to ourselves. And then we can give love from a place that is totally full and be of service. So we're going to come now towards wheel pose. So first of all, we start off lying down on the back. This is one way to enter the pose. We can start off on our backs. Good. And then for some of us, maybe we go into bridge and we lift up and we wiggle the arms underneath. And then if you want a little bit of a deeper back bend, you could lift up onto your toes, wiggling your thumbs into your spine. Good. And lifting up, allowing the heels to come down, then bringing one knee up and then the other, letting your hips come down. It's a bigger back bend. You could then let the legs come down, keep supporting the back to lift up. That's one option. And then we come down, wave like motion. Option two, let's get into our big back bend. So bring your hands back. In fact, let's take this against the wall. So we bring your hands back. Sometimes it can feel like the, it's the hands are going to shoot out behind you. And in order to stop that happening, if you bring the heel of your hand to the wall, then of course the wall's not going anywhere. So you won't go anywhere. So we're going to come back. I'm going to settle myself, bringing the heel of my hand to the wall. going to wriggle myself back. My hands are a little closer to my head. Good. Then bend my knees, bringing my feet nice and close to my bottom. Good. From here, lift up. First of all, you might want to come onto your head, but push away from the ground so you're not placing weight on your head or through the neck. Good. From here, start to straighten up the arms. Start to press through the legs, sending your chest back towards the wall. And then when you're ready, you can come back down. Another option might be to place your blocks on the floor by the wall. And again, turn your fingers, this time bringing your fingers to the edge of the blocks. And then again, pressing. So you're now moving slightly away from the wall, gives you a bit more space. And we lift up once again. And now we push with the legs. This is where the strength of the legs is important. Squeeze the glutes and move the chest back. Looking down, sending your wrists underneath your armpits and keeping your heels to the floor. And that is one of your ways to enter into wheel pose. Now, lots of different ways to enter into this pose. Here's another option. One of my favorite poses, Wild Thing. This is equally a lovely heart opener. So from our downward facing dog, and this is where that big shoulder rotation becomes important. We take one leg up to the sky, we bend the knee. You can flip your dog here, or if you need to, you come forward via your plank. But either way, let's arrive into flip dog. Push your hips up to the sky. Now, the bottom hand starts to pivot and turn as the top hand finds the floor. From here, we press back into our wheel pose. And then we turn the bottom hand to come all the way back out again. Option two, we can cross the ankles, one in front of the other. And then whichever leg is in front, let's say your left leg is in front, you're going to start turning your heels in the same direction. We're going to bend the knees. Good. Lift the right arm up as you come into a tabletop. This time, though, I'm going to reach the right arm back, pivoting on the bottom hand. Good. And again, arriving back into my wheel. In your wheel pose, you absolutely can walk your feet back, taking a different variation of the posture. And then coming back, simply turning, arriving back in your crisscross posture. Good. Now, 
one more option to give to you today is forearm wheel. Now you can of course get into your wheel by dropping back from standing, yeah, from a standing pose, or from camel. So from your knees, you st start here, lean back, and you find your wheel transition as the knees come up off the floor and you come back onto your hands. But today I'm gonna show you um, two more options of wheel pose. One is forearm wheel and one is alien wheel. So forearm wheel first, forearm wheel where we're gonna come down. Once again, let's start off as though we're doing bridge pose. And coming down, taking the arms back, and then walk your fingertips towards your shoulders. Keep walking them. And then once they're at your shoulders, I'm going to again come up onto my head and then walk my fingertips back until my forearms are to the ground. Good. From here, letting my shoulders squeeze inwards, I'm going to press and lift my head up. Good. From here, pressing with my legs to extend again, taking the armpits over my base, this time not my wrists, but my elbows. Coming back into forearm wheel. And then bringing yourself back down. Good. Now, alien pose. This is a fun alternative. So if you're practicing your wheel and you wanna take something different, alien pose is where you're going to dip your bottom down towards the ground at the same time as you're arching through your upper back. Lots of openness in the shoulders, strength in the legs and arching. So let's have a go. So you're gonna come back down, take the hands back ready for your wheel. From here, we're gonna press up into our wheel. And I'm gonna just walk my feet back slightly feet are steady, grounded, parallel to one another, and sending my shoulders back over my wrists. And then I'm gonna actually step back a little bit more, lift up onto my tiptoes, and start to sink my bottom down towards the floor. Take it slow, this is a big back bend. And then this is where we create this unusual shape for alien. Good. So that's your wheel pose tutorial for today. I really hope that you've enjoyed these last five lessons that we've done. We have done camel pose. We have done dancer's pose. We have done bow pose. We have done wheel pose. And there's another one that I forgot. <laughs> We've done five poses this week. Bow pose, that's it. We've done five poses this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. Join me now. We're going to do a 45 minute flow that's going to combine elements of all of those poses. And let's discover how much we've opened our hearts and unfurled to release. So before I leave you, take a little moment, come down into child's pose. A few deep breaths here. Good. Being aware of your heart rate. There's this kind of almost excitement in the opening of our heart, in unblocking places where you might have been holding stagnant energy, in finding more space in the body than we had before, in just discovering a little bit more of what we're capable of doing and how much we are capable of exploring ourselves. So give yourself a well done, give yourself thanks for showing up for you and I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Thank you. I see you soon.